I made a fairy garden. I think someone moved in. It started out as a fun project. My daughter is obsessed with all things magical. Unicorns, fairies, everything. So I thought we could have fun building a fairy garden with her. Boy, was I wrong. We started in the west corner of the lawn, next to the vegetable garden. This is their house, see? I said, gesturing to a little stone cottage I bought at a flea market. Ooh. She was immediately hooked. And we can make them a path, out of these stones, and a little pond, and some moss for grass. The whole project took two hours, but looked amazing. A cobblestone path, only two inches wide, went up to the stone cottage. Mounds of moss sat on either side, mimicking tiny grass, and branches stuck in the ground were tiny trees. We'd even dug a small pond, a six-inch wide hole lined with aluminum foil we'd painted blue. Wow. I had no idea you were so crafty, my wife said when we showed her. It's my little secret. So you won't ask me to help you redecorate the bathroom. She stuck her tongue out at me. When will the fairies move in, daddy? Ava asked. Maybe tonight. Can I leave them food? Maybe that will make them move in faster. Sure. How about some of mommy's chocolate? Katie frowned at me. Just kidding. I think they'd love a pretzel. That night, after Ava had gone to sleep, I went outside and took a bite of the pretzel. In the morning, we told her an elaborate story of how we'd heard them walking around at night. Little footsteps on the grass, hushed whispers, and tinkly laughter. It's okay to lie to your kids about things that spark their imagination. Right. It was really Katie who took the whole thing to the next level. That evening, as dusk began to fall, I saw a light on in the fairy home. A soft white glow, coming from the upstairs window, reflecting in the tiny ripples of the pond. Katie, you genius. Ava was thrilled when she saw it. Mommy. Daddy. The fairies have moved in. Katie smiled at me, a knowing smile. I winked back at her. Maybe they're like us. A fairy mommy, a fairy daddy, and a fairy girl. Maybe they are. Can I meet them, daddy? Please. I felt a twinge of guilt. Maybe it wasn't such a good idea to lie to Ava, after all. But Katie was quick on her feet. Fairies are allergic to people, she said, jumping in. You know how you sneeze when you go over Samantha's house. Because you're allergic to her cat. Well, fairies are allergic to us. So if we go over there, we'll make them really sick. Ava pouted. Okay. I don't want to make them sick. Then her face lit up. Maybe I can see them through the window. I'm going to stay up and watch them. All night. Yikes. They already went to sleep, Katie replied. And we need to go to sleep, soon too. Why do they sleep with the light on? They're afraid of the dark, I interjected. Oh. After Ava fell asleep, we retreated to the bedroom. That was brilliant. Putting a light in there. Her brows furrowed. I didn't put a light in there. What? I thought you did. My heart dropped. You, you didn't put the light in there? She shook her head. But if you didn't, then who? Oh. It must have come with one. A solar-powered one. And it didn't charge up the first day. We'd had the same issue with the lights I got for the garden. They needed a full day to charge in the sun before turning on at night. And you only paid 15 bucks, right? Pretty sweet. Yeah. I stared out at the glowing light. Just a twinkle in the darkness, like a distant star. I smiled and closed the curtains. Mommy. Daddy. I saw the fairies. Ava was bouncing up and down at the breakfast table, unable to contain her excitement. When did you see them? Katie asked, not looking up as she poured syrup onto her plate. Last night. I woke up from a bad dream and looked out the window, and they were out there. I shot Katie a look. What, exactly, did you see? Fairies. What did they look like? Fairies. Okay, this wasn't going anywhere. What were they doing? They were playing music and dancing. But then, then I think they saw me, because they stopped dancing. I waved to them. They didn't wave back though. She frowned. Maybe they're shy. She has such a big imagination, Katie said, as Ava ran to the window to look for them. I bet she's going to be an author someday. Uh-huh, I said, slightly disturbed by Ava's account. Ava spent most of the day playing outside, watching the fairy garden. She even dropped a goldfish cracker in the pond, look, daddy, the pond has fish now, and added a handwritten sign in front of the house. It was around 4 p.m. that I noticed it. I just sat down in the lawn chair with another iced coffee. But then I saw it, something pale and gray, barely poking up from the grass. I got up and walked over, my heart beginning to pound. Crouched down, parted the grass. It was a little mushroom. Small and gray, popping up from the dark soil. A circular cap fanning out from a thin stem, supported by dark brown gills. Ava, look. A mushroom. Fairies love mushrooms. They use them like chairs and umbrellas and all kinds of things. You know what, I bet they planted that mushroom on purpose. And so, the fairy story continued. 
Little did I know how terrifying it was about to get. Snap. I woke up with a start. Vivid dreams hung in my mind of little people with wings and sharp teeth and tiny faces contorted into sneers. Dancing around their little home, then standing statues still as they noticed Ava watching them. I looked at the clock. 3.42 a.m. I rolled over, sighing, and froze. A flurry of movement outside. Someone in the yard. Walking towards the fairy garden. Someone small, Ava. Oh, God, no. I jumped out of bed and raced down the stairs. Threw the back door open. Ava. Come back in here. She didn't turn around. I ran out into the yard, the grass cold and wet against my feet. Ava. Daddy, she said softly, not removing her gaze from the tiny stone cottage. When I'm calling to you, you need to listen. I joined her in front of the fairy garden, my heart hammering in my chest. Why are you out here? I wanted to see the fairies. They were dancing again. Ava, honey, I swallowed, the guilt lead in my body. There aren't any fairies. Okay. I'm so sorry. Mom and I made it up. This is just some stupid little house I bought at a flea market. And I ate the pretzel, not them. We've been, we've been lying to you, and it wasn't nice, and I'm sorry. The door creaked open behind us as Katie walked out, still wearing her cat pajamas. She rushed over to us. What's going on? Ava was out here to see the fairies. And I, I told her they're not real. She turned to me, slowly. They are real, daddy. I saw them. No. I don't know what you saw. But you didn't see fairies. But, daddy, I think we can talk about this in the morning, Katie said, forcing a smile. Let's get back to bed, okay? She put her arm around Ava and led her back into the house. I just stood there, by the fairy garden, motionless. Then I picked up a little cottage. The stone exterior looked purple in the moonlight. The little door hung ajar. The two downstairs windows were dark, their tiny flower boxes in shadow. But the upstairs window, a circular one hanging above the door, glowed white. The glass was slightly frosted, but I could make out vague shapes inside. The artist had taken the time to create the illusion of a room. I squinted, trying to make out any details, a dark shape flashed by the window. I yelped and dropped the cottage. It bounced into the grass, rolled over the pond, which was now sludgy with goldfish crackers, and came to a stop inches from the mushroom. Face down, the windows pressed into the grass. I didn't pick it up. I ran into the house, slipping in the wet grass, my heart pounding in my chest. A bug. A bug got caught into it. It must have been attracted to the light and then couldn't find a way out. That's what I told myself as I locked the door, clicked the deadbolt, and slipped back into bed. Just a bug. Katie and I sat across from each other, deep circles under our eyes, as Ava watched TV in the other room. We should have realized she'd go out there looking for them Katie said, as she took a sip of tea. She's going to be so upset when I throw it out. Why don't we just bring it inside? Put it in her room, even. So she can check on the fairies anytime. Put the fairy cottage in her room? Katie nodded. My stomach twisted. Uh, I guess we can bring it inside. But let's put it in the kitchen. If we put it in her room, she'll stay up all night. Good point. I couldn't fight the unsettling feeling as I brought the cottage inside. The light in the upstairs window shone through the frosted glass. Bits of wet grass stuck to the stone exterior. I almost expected to feel movement inside, the scampering of little feet, panicking, as I relocated their home. But of course, there was nothing. Ava was so happy. The fairies are with us now. She kept saying, running over to the cottage and peering in the windows. Do you think they like cookies? She put one at their doorstep. Or, maybe cereal. The wet plop of soggy corn flakes hitting the table. But the day went well, as we added little accessories to the indoor fairy home, went out to lunch, and played some board games. It was that night that things went south. Thump. 3.22 a.m. I wasn't actually sure if I dreamed the noise or not, but I figured I'd better check on Ava. Yawning loudly, I pulled myself out of bed and shuffled down the hallway. But when I opened her door, I found her fast asleep, wrapped up in her unicorn blanket. Good. I started back towards the bedroom thump. It wasn't a loud noise. Just a soft thump. Could be the house settling, water rushing through the pipes and knocking in the walls. A badly placed toy falling off a table, the fridge making ice. Still, my heart was pounding as I slowly descended the stairs. I'm calling 911 I called out even, though I'd left my phone upstairs. I didn't expect a response. I truly didn't. I'd only said it in the tiny, fraction of a chance that someone had broken in and could hear. But I did get a response. And it wasn't frantic footsteps to the door or a getaway car revving its engine. It was something far worse. A giggle. Coming from the kitchen. Horror flooded me. Who's there? Come out here where I can see you. I stepped through the living room. Taking a deep breath, I paused behind the wall and then jumped out into the kitchen. It was empty. 
I stared at the only source of light in the kitchen. That one upstairs window of the fairy house, glowing like it always did. I stared at it without blinking. Wondering if I'd see that horrible little shadow flit by again. Get a hold of yourself. There might be a real person in the house, and you're looking for freaking fairies. I tore my eyes away from the cottage and scanned the kitchen. Empty. I poked my head out into the other doorway, where the kitchen connected with the dining room. Also empty. Everything was silent now too, still as death. I sucked in a deep breath and returned to the kitchen. But something felt different. A horrible sense of dissonance, unease. Like watching a happy scene in a horror movie, knowing the smiles and laughter are too much and the killer's going to pop out any second. I took a step towards the fairy home. Then another. And another. Tiny little faces flashed through my mind, their features contorted into horrific snarls, their eyes glowing unnatural yellow. Get a hold of yourself. I was standing right in front of the cottage now. Staring into that little white light. There's. No. Such. Thing. As. Fairies. I reached out and grabbed the fairy home. It felt strange and my hands warm. Warmer than ceramic should be. I stared into that window, my heart thrumming in my chest. And then it happened. A flash of black, across the window. It fell from my hands. I saw it in slow motion, the stone cottage careening to the ground, the jagged crack splitting it in two. The ceramic halves rolled away from each other. And from the innards, something flew out. Something terrible and dark. It flew at my face and I screamed, swatting at it helplessly with my hands. I screamed again and then no. It was a beetle. Just an ordinary beetle, haplessly buzzing around the room, trying to find a way out. Footsteps sounded above me now, as Katie rushed out of bed. As Ava began to cry. Oh, Ava, I'm so sorry. I looked down at the remains of the fairy house, hopelessly destroyed. Wait, what, is that? I crouched to the ground. Nestled inside the ceramic was something small, shiny, white. I reached over and picked it up. The smooth surface was warm against my hands, almost hot. I turned it over. Then I realized what it was. The camera. With a microphone, a speaker and a little white light glowing on it. Showing it was recording.